Now, the Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. Sponsored by Ohio Northern University. The best discoveries come from the unexpected. By the Toledo Clinic. Choose well, feel better. By PT Link Physical Therapy. Feel the difference and get relief now. And by Frickers, the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Now, here's Jordan Strack. Welcome into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. We are out at Genoa tonight where we had our game night live broadcast on our WTOL YouTube page. We'll have coverage from this game coming up. Hard to believe we are at the end of the regular season already, but week six is here and here we go. Let's start with our game of the week. It is the Monster Showdown and the NWOAL between Archbold and Wauseon. Wauseon 5-0, Archbold 5-0. The same story last year and Archbold beat them 38-0. Would this year be different? Wauseon up 7-0. They would add to it here. Connor Penrod airing it out. Colton DeGroff in the end zone. Pulls it in. It's a two-score lead. Then Wauseon would get the defense going. DJ Newman scrambling, looking for a man. But Taryn Garcia steps in front of it. The big man with nothing but green grass in front of him. It's a pick six and a 21-0 lead for Wauseon. Archbold in big trouble. But they would get things going here. Newman finds Carson Dominic in the end zone. Gets the mitts under it. Blue streaks are on the board. Then right before the half, Archbold would pull within a score of Noah, Go Noah Gomez here. Up the middle, he is in. So we jump to the fourth quarter now. Archbold down a score, three minutes to go. Newman on the quarterback keeper, slipping through tackles. He gets into the end zone for a game tying touchdown. But Coach Dominic doesn't want to tie it up. He wants to go for two in the lead. On the two point conversion, Antonio Cruz to Brandon Taylor. The Blue Streaks defense could hold up after that. Archbold wins it 36 35, and Christy Kopanis has more. From down 21 0 to NWOAL champs, it was the fight in Archibald that made Coach Dominic so confident to go for two and go for the win. Uh, we've been talking about it, you know, because we had a hard time stopping them all night long, and it was just one of those things the momentum, and we wanted to get to the finish with the momentum, and it really did. And then defense came out and made a play at the end to seal the deal. Unbelievable. Finally, take the lead from a two point conversion. Crazy. It didn't look good. But we never lost hope, and it was just a great game overall, a great team win. But we said all along when we got down that 21-0, uh, never quit, and, and our young men didn't. They uh, they made some adjustments, and uh, hats off to Wauseon. They, they had a heck of a first half, a good game plan for us, but um, our seniors just really hung tight, kept the guys going, and very proud of the young men tonight. And now the Blue Streaks turn their attention to the playoffs, and with the momentum that they have coming out of tonight, they should be a very dangerous team in the coming weeks. Reporting from Archibald tonight, Chrissy Kopanis, WTOL 11. Christy, thanks to the track now. St. John's has a first round playoff five this week. They're home with Whitmer. Titans up 21-6. Looking to add to it here. Under a minute till halftime. Brady Lichtenberg looking deep down the middle. Find Tommy Gallagher. That's a huge game deep into Whitmer territory. And the Titans would cap off the drive here. Lichtenberg feeling some pressure. Scrambles out. Keeps his eyes downfield. What accuracy here. Find Spencer Tayo in the end zone. Titans win it 37 to 14. Fremont Ross and St. Francis from the Glass Bowl. The Knights up 7-6 early and they would add to it here. David Kaiser gives to Stephen McCoy. Goes off the right side, squeezes in. It's a nine yard score. St. Francis up 14-6. And then the Knights getting it done defensively too. Caden Holmes looking to make a play for Ross. Scrambles out of the pocket. Throws back across his body. There's Damo Austin with the pick. Shows off the speed, takes it all the way down deep into Ross territory. He's knocked out near the 10 yard line. And then St. Francis would turn that into points. Give it to McCoy again, this time off the left side. Cuts back, he's in. Knights win a shootout, 49-46. And the last game in the track tonight, Finley back in action tonight. It's taking on Lima Senior. Second quarter, Trojans trying to preserve the lead. Spartans try to run up the middle, but it's stuffed by Tanner Hurts for a loss. Then third quarter, Trojans on offense, handed off to Isaac James. He would truck a defender on his way to a big first down. And then later, it's Max Roth. Back to pass, caught by A.J. Adams, and check out the spin move here. Gets down the sideline and into the end zone. Finley wins it 31-6. to Rivalry night in the NLL, the best rivalry in Ohio. Don't at me on Twitter. I swear I won't even listen to you. The battle for the Dave Dog Bell. Bobby and Perrysburg. First quarter, opening drive for the Jackets. Play action pass, T.J. Tackett to Isaac Witten. No one's going to touch him. Witten walks in. It's 7-0 Perrysburg. Later, Hebert up 14-0. It wasn't just the offense playing well. Camp Darrington with a nice tackle for a loss. The Jackets held Maumee to minus 13 yards. 
Still first quarter, Jack is in the red zone. This time, Connor Wallenjack gets the handoff around the corner. He walks in, he get 140 yards and a couple scores. Perrysburg wins big, 44 nothing. Also tonight in the NLL, really good one here. Bowling Green and Napoleon both sitting at 4-1. That BG band getting in one last performance for their seniors. Closing minutes of the second quarter, 12-7 game. Eli Brown rolling out of the pocket. Ends up firing to Nick Powers. He's in for a short touchdown. It's 19-7 at the half. Score would hold into the fourth. Napoleon's Tanner Rubenstein punches it in. It's a one-yard run. It's a 19-14 game, four minutes to go. BG just needs to run out the clock, right? Oh, no. Tanner Rubenstein gets the strip and the recovery. Napoleon has it with 120 left, and they have a shot. And then look at this play. Zach Rosebrook, his mom was my daughter's teacher in third grade. Great pass downfield to Joshua Mack. First down completion. But Bowling Green's defense was bend, but not break. They hold off a potential comeback. BG wins it at home, 19-14. John Monk has more. Jordan, after Bowling Green went up 19 to seven, both offenses seemed to stagnate a bit, and this was a defensive struggle for the second half. But then Napoleon made a game of it with four minutes left, making it a five point game, and then turning the ball over as BG was trying to run out the clock. But Bowling Green's defense was able to make a stand, holding off Napoleon Wildcats' comeback attempt, winning this game at home 19 to 14. Uh, it was great, you know, I mean, they got stops when we needed to and then end up making big plays when they needed to. Um, we got saying that we like Ben don't break, so I, I think that really showed what we were about. You know, we're happy. We're excited for our program. We're back where we feel like we belong. It's been about two years since we've been there, and so for us to get up in that, that conversation in the top two, three in the league, that's good. You know, we're going to keep driving for championships, but uh, we're, we're really happy with where we're at tonight, and we just beat a really good football team. I'm excited about that. And actually, both teams have a bye going into the state tournament before BG. Coach Connor says they're going to treat next week's four practices as if they have a game on Friday. Reporting from Bowling Green, I'm John Monk, WTOL 11. Great rivalry matchup here, the fight of the blue and white. Springfield and Anthony Wayne out in White House. First drive of the night for the Generals. Charles Renninger takes the handoff, has some great vision. Goes virtually untouched for the first score of the game for Anthony Wayne. Blue Devils showing what they can do as well. Put it in the hands of Brandon Langston. He breaks off a big chunk of yards. That would get Springfield on the board. But the Generals offense hard to keep up with. Renninger powers his way into the end zone. He'd score five times against the Blue Devils tonight. Anthony Wayne wins big in their rivalry matchup, 62-21. And the final rivalry night stop in the NLL, the battle of Sylvania, Southview, and Northview. Northview scoreless in the first half. Aiden Schmidt gets it from a few yards out. That would end the Wildcat drought. It's a 7-5 lead. Wildcats then near the goal line again. This time they go with Brock Williamson. He absorbs a few hits, breaks the plane. Northview, their second touchdown of the lead to extend that lead, second touchdown of the game to extend that lead. And the Cougars need to score here. But Aiden Schwartz coming in, plays in a huge, huge hit. Destroying Southview's drive. Northview would hold on to win it 14 to 5. All right, time for our first break here on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. When we come back, we're heading north of the border. Bedford's Kyle Scoble has battled his way back onto the football field, but it hasn't been an easy path to this point. We will share his story when we return on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday.